morning everybody uh, I'm tired I've been working on the Jeep for the past let's see what time is it it's seven o'clock right now so I've been working on the Jeep for 14 15 hours now um, the reason why I'm pushing is because the next uh, the next um, I guess I'm delirious from being tired but the next uh, week and a half or two weeks at nighttime, it's supposed to be about 40 degrees, and I wanted to get this Rhino liner done because um, I want to get this Jeep done before winter comes. So uh, that's my goal. I, I need to get this done at least by the end of fall. Um, so let me show you guys what I've done. Ta-da! <laughs> so I, um, as you can see, I did the uh, Herculiner. Uh, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, if you want to see it up close, it's got that nice gritty, this is the second coat I just finished. Um, that nice gritty looking texture. I know this stuff uh, fades um, after a while. It doesn't stay black like this, unfortunately. Um, but I don't plan... I don't plan to keep this vehicle parked outside, so it's going to stay in this garage. So... Um, I had to cut out right here like I was talking about to get that rust out of there. Um, you can see the uh, metal that I welded in. Um, the section over here on the uh, wheel wells, you can see the little squares if you look. Um, all those were the giant holes that were there. Um, I cut all those out and patched them. And the gas tank... Um, I still haven't painted the gas tank, but I didn't um, cut these little brackets out um, that are meant for the strap. I just decided to make my own. I'll show you guys what I did down here. Uh, let me turn my flash on. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, I took some uh, U-channel that I had. Um, as a matter of fact, that piece right there and the one right here was actually supposed to go um, right here. I just never put it there because I wasn't sure if it would be in the way of the uh, gas lines or anything like that. So, And I realized the bed has plenty of support. It doesn't uh, bend down there or anything like that, so I just never used it. Um, and instead of cutting out those little uh, gas tank strap uh, mounts and you know wire wheeling them and doing all of that and just too much work um, I cut this one in half drilled a hole in it put a 3 8 bolt in there um, and I got the gas tank down here and the reason why I have it down here is because I needed to put the filler tube onto the uh, thing right there and have it all routed in here and um, it comes right here and I needed to line up the tank with that. Um, and then, so basically I was juggling the tank with one hand, holding the strap and the tank. And then I had to mark uh, where the strap, um, you know, bolt holes are. And I got it all lined up. So this is just like it was from factory. Um, I just need to come down here and uh, clean up all the welds and stuff. I haven't done any of that yet. It's been like weeks. Nothing is rusted though because it's inside the shop. The shop doesn't really see any dew or anything like that uh, as long as you keep the doors and stuff closed. So, But I need to come down here, clean it up, and paint it. Um, I need to finish cleaning the gas tank and painting that and getting that uh, put it back in the car. Because I, um, I don't drive the thing, obviously, because I need to get the leaf springs uh, done. But I don't want to drive it with you know, a, a one gallon or two gallon, you know, gas can anymore. It's kind of stupid. The tank is fixed. It doesn't leak. Um, and it needs to be put back in. And one thing that really pisses me off uh, is this is the filler uh, tube from, or the factory one. Uh, this one obviously is hard as a rock. And, you know, the uh, rubber right there broke tore off or whatever and that's why it leaks the rest of it is okay besides being hard as a rock um, this is the vent tube right here and I ordered an s-shaped filler neck um, made in the United States this one has a flange on it and I didn't realize that 
there's one without a flange and one with a flange, but the description of it doesn't say the dimensions of it. It just says with flange, without flange. Well, um, you know, I figured, well, it probably should have one because um, this is where the screws go, you know, for the, um, the little bolts right here that you see. That's where these go. But the problem is, if I can line this up, look how large the opening is on this. Sorry. Look how large the opening is on that. And then look how small the opening is on this. So how am I going to fit the filler uh, neck to this? It doesn't even make any sense. So I don't know who molded this, or maybe I ordered the wrong one. Maybe the one without the flange is the larger diameter one, but the description doesn't say that. So I need to call the company who makes this stuff and ask them because, to be honest, this should be in the description, and it's kind of a little ridiculous in my opinion. So um, they charge a 20% restocking fee as well over a $30 filler neck, um, which should have a description on the size, but it doesn't. So how is that my problem? So... Anyway, that thing kind of irritates me because um, the truck is nearly done. Um, you know, besides fixing this stuff, which is just all cosmetic, um, I'll do that as I go. But I'm not going to, like, push to do it um, like I've been doing to actually get the truck running. Unfortunately, I got some of that tar right here, so um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that off. This stuff just does not come off, but um, whatever. Chalk it up to whatever the rest of the Jeep looks like. Um, so in order to do the bed liner, I had to sand the entire bed by hand. I used a 100 grit sandpaper. Um, and somebody had, like I said, repainted this Jeep at one point. You can see the shiny paint along this crack is the original Jeep paint. And this purplish blue is the paint that somebody put on here. Now, they didn't scuff up the paint they just spray painted some walmart special you know uh probably krylon because krylon is not that great at uh, paint and they probably just and they just sprayed it on here without scuffing it up and that's why it's peeling everywhere and the funny thing about it is when i was cleaning up the bed um when it's peeling it's not peeling hard and chunky it's peeling like like confetti paper it's really weird um so when i was actually sanding it with my uh, drill and this thing, this thing actually expands open like flat when the uh, drill is spinning. And believe it or not, if you push it flat up against the panel, not sideways, but flat, it actually just scuffed the, uh, or got that flaky confetti paint off and it actually left the original paint job alone. So it was actually nice and shiny and blue in here versus that flaky paint. Um, so that was kind of interesting. So I think I'm going to buy another one of those things. And I'm going to probably try to get this paint off of here. Um, try to get most of the original paint back. Because um, whoever painted this thing, they just did an absolutely terrible job. And it doesn't make any sense to paint it because the original paint job is fine. I, I just don't understand why they did that. So um, I don't know. We'll see. That's down the road. But anyway, this is two coats of the Herculiner. Um, the bed is done. I can't do any more welding or anything like that to the actual bed. I mean, there's no need for it. I ground down all of the um, spot welds and the fill welds. Uh, you know, had to fix some of them because they had holes in them. Um, I got all the rust off of it. Everything is seam sealed. Um, I mean, it's it's done. The um, bed supports are done, the gas tank is welded in, um, there's nothing left to do to the bed, um, other than fix these outer walls, so, um, so that's one project finally done, uh, and then I wanted to show you guys, here's one leaf spring, I ordered a second one, um, so the leaf springs are another big thing that I need to fix before I can actually really drive it into town and stuff, I put the front bumper on, um, it's a three-piece, steel chrome bumper um i know i need to fix you know this stuff i will eventually um and i got myself some farm use tags because uh, virginia um uh, they tried to 
changed the uh, farm use um, thing. We had to register it every year because people were like driving PT cruisers and Volkswagen Beetles with farm use tags. Um, what kind of farm use are you getting out of a one or two door car? You know what I mean? Or sorry, a, a small two door or four door car. Um, this truck would be more of a farm use truck. You know what I mean? So, um, but that law didn't pass. So the original law that's been here um, is staying for one more year. So I'm throwing it on there for now. So once I get the leaf springs on um, and the gas tank filler neck fixed or corrected, uh, then I can drive this thing into town. Um, to be honest, I'm a little nervous doing it. I mean, I got tires, leaf springs are going to go in, bed is done, engine is running good. Um, but such a long drive I've never done on a vehicle like this, or I've never done with this vehicle yet. So um, it will be interesting. Um, I still need to change the transmission fluid. The transfer case fluid, I haven't even checked the level of it. Um, I need to change that as well, but it takes a special TCL4 fluid, which I don't have right now. Um, I think I can order it on Amazon, though. Uh, the differential fluid, I'm going to be changing as well. And uh, I like painting differential covers. Some people paint them, like, red, usually, or I've seen yellow. But I'm going to be painting mine... Um, where is it? If I can find it. I'm going to be painting mine the same AMC blue that I painted my valve covers, oil pan, uh, oil filler neck, power steering pulley on my Wagoneer over there. So um, I think that's kind of cool, actually. Um, the AMC blue will kind of match the uh, blue on the vehicle, maybe a little bit. It's kind of a bluish green, but it's still kind of cool, I think. So um, I don't even know if I have a limited slip in the rear of here, to be honest. So I'm just going to put regular gear oil on there. Uh, there is no tag or anything on there. So... Um, I guess I have to look it up to see how I can find out if it's a posi traction or not. I guess jack the axle up, spin one of the wheels, and if the other one spins the other direction, then I don't have a, uh, limited slip. Um, I don't even know if they had limited slip back then, but, um, anyway, uh, and another thing I need to do, I I'm still having arguments with people online. I I'm not really an argumentative person, but... Um, it's really frustrating because everybody keeps saying that these leaf springs are the same length as these, which they are if you measure from one to that end, but they're not the same length if you measure from the middle to the ends, as I have told you guys. So because it's going to be shifting my axle three quarters of an inch back, which is fine because the axle is already forward, um, I noticed my brake line right here will have to be moved. And I promise I'll end the video after this. I just want to show you guys this to the know-it-alls online. Do you see that brake line? I think I showed you guys this a long time ago when I cut off the bed floor. This brake line has no give. It's at its maximum. This is the factory brake line, by the way. Uh, my flash is uh, not working because my phone is about to die. But if the axle moves three-quarters of an inch back... This is going to break. So I'm going to have to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have to um, either unscrew it right here or I'm probably just going to cut the frame right here and cut the frame right there just to get it out. Um, somebody had redone the brake lines right here, so there's tons of, you know, uh, brake line right there. So I'm just going to move this rubber line and mount it onto this um, cross member support. So that way it's directly above the axle and it will have like maybe four inches of play so it'll have plenty of room to move around with um but to the know-it-alls online the the leaf springs are the same the same length it'll it'll fit i'm sure it'll fit the axle goes back but again the brake line is gonna rip if i do that so um they are not the same again the eight foot bed leaf springs are different um Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I am fucking tired, and uh, I'm going to go to bed at, I think, 8 a.m. in the morning, so I'll probably sleep all day. So thanks for watching, everybody.